This right here is my spot. And I found this place about halfway through high school. And yes, it is not the most scenic of places, but it's different from the usual terrain. But the reason I started coming here was co Coronavirus is now in New Zealand. Countries around the world are making contingency plans for a full-blown pandemic caused by coronavirus. Toronto's first suspected case of the coronavirus is here. Coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. The first case of China's new and deadly coronavirus has been reported here in the U.S. Once people decided not to be led by fear, something happened. People started to catch on that governments could snap their fingers and impose anything they deemed necessary on you. This included shelter-in-place orders, travel bans, and much more. You couldn't fly on airplanes and you couldn't go much of anywhere. Speaking of which, remember how airplanes were grounded a few months back and it took weeks to recover? Essentially, you were in the hands of whoever you're traveling with. You have nothing from home, you have no supplies, you're stranded. You are one virus away from being stuck in the middle of a foreign place. And ultimately, people just wanted to live life again. Being stranded inside your house for multiple weeks isn't exactly exciting, and your phone can only give you so much media, and Netflix can only give you so many shows. And over time, your brain ultimately numbs to the amount of dopamine you're getting from your phone. And people needed a way out. Naturally, parks and scenic areas became flooded as people were hungry to get out and see new things. Local, state, and national parks were the place to be. The problem is there's only so many parks in a 50-mile radius. So people were forced to either adapt or stay put. That is exactly why overlanding exploded. And personally, I never even heard of the term overlanding before that thing happened, and I doubt many others did as well. But at the end of the day, what drew me to overlanding is the self-reliance aspect. And is a very big part of overlanding, being able to survive on your own for multiple days at a time without the need for anybody. And that is a very crucial skill to have, especially in this time and day where you can see how easily things can crumble just like that, and you could be stuck in one spot and be stranded essentially. I believe others also saw the writing on the wall as far as the, the traveling goes. You could travel somewhere and you fly there and you stay in a hotel or whatever and stuff happens and essentially you have nothing. You are stranded in a foreign place with no supplies. And that is the beautiful thing about overlanding. You hop in your truck or whatever vehicle you're using and you have everything with you. You got food, you got literally stuff to recover your vehicle if something goes wrong, which is so cool. And yes, I know I'm nerding out on this quite a lot, but it's just, it's fascinating and I love it. I just love the idea of being on your own. And there's a lot of survival skills that come along with that that you just learn as you go and that I'm still learning as I go. And because people thought this way, they could also build a community of like-minded people. So when you're overlanding with somebody, they probably have a lot of the same skills that you have and more that they can teach you and vice versa. And that is just a really cool thing to do because you essentially build each other up at the end of the day and learn a lot of things. And with all these parks filling up and with all these camp spots filling up, people wanted a way to get out to a really cool location and see something new that nobody else has seen. And ultimately, overlanding is one of the only ways to do that. You can get out in the middle of nowhere on a rugged trail that's unmarked or whatever and just see new things. And you can be away from people, be just doing your own thing or do that thing with others which is also really fun to do. But you really have to work for it. You have to work a lot just to get to that certain spot that you want to get to. Not to mention that you probably have a cool overland rig now that looks awesome, can do awesome things, and is highly functional. I hope, I hope it's highly functional. Personally, I didn't start getting into overlanding until I would say late 2021. That's when I started researching it. I didn't start actually overlanding until the following year. But when things popped off in 2020, I was like, how can you travel? but on your own, have your own supplies, basically have your own house. And obviously a motorhome wasn't really, wasn't really in my mind at that point because I wanted something small and lightweight that I could just drive wherever. And ever since then, I've been learning a ton. 
I still have no clue what I'm doing. I consider myself a newbie at the most basic of levels, but there's been a lot of cool people that I've been watching, learning from, and that's what's exciting about overlanding. There's so much you can learn. It, it, does, it can go outside of the aspect of vehicles. It can go into anything, any outdoor sport, and it's just really fun. Essentially, I just wanted to discuss what got me into overlanding, what got a lot of people into overlanding, because as you know, during 2020, there was a huge spike in overlanding and ever since then it's been climbing. So comment down below what got you into overland because I'm actually interested to hear that. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to uh, bro overlanding, so I'll see you in the next one.